Hello? 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 Yeah. Hello. 
If we can all be seated. Hello? Good morning. If we can all be seated. The procession is going to start.
Your Eminence, Archbishop Epiropoulos, if you could please begin us with a prayer. Christos Anesti. Christos Anesti. Christ our God, conqueror of death and captain of our faith, bless us all as we celebrate the commencement of ministry for the graduates of our beloved Hellenic College and Holy Cross. Grant your divine wisdom and grace to all who serve, teach, and learn on this hill of hope and grant them fulfillment and success in every path they choose in accordance with your holy will. To the power of the precious and life-giving cross, amen. Amen. First off, can everyone hear me? Is the microphone working? Can you all hear me in the back? Your Eminence, Archbishop Elpidopoulos. Your Eminence is Metropolitan Savas, Metropolitan Methodios. Your Graces, Reverend Fathers, members of the Board of Trustees, respected member, members of faculty and deans, parents, friends, honorees, and honored guests on the stage with me, and most importantly, our soon-to-be new graduates. Welcome to the 80th commencement exercise of Helena College Holy Cross. 
Uh, as the president of the, of the institution for two and a half years, I can't even begin to tell you how overjoyed I am to actually see warm, smiling bodies in person and not in one by two inch sections of a screen. Um, and so as, as joyful and as uh, happy as you all are at this moment, uh, I can assure you that I'm in the same uh, both spiritual and emotional condition. Um, the most important part of a president's uh, comments at something like this is A, brevity, and secondarily, maybe, maybe something meaningful. And uh, so I've relied on someone else to provide both to me. Uh, what I'd like to do is to read a poem by Constantine Cavafy, which I think is really very appropriate, and I'm going to end with, with something else that actually I observed today at the brief memorial at the site of Archbishop Iacobos. The poem is titled Ithaca. As you set out for Ithaca, hope your road is a long one, full of adventure, full of discovery. Listagonians, Cyclops, angry Poseidon, don't be afraid of them. You'll never find things like that on your way as long as you keep your thoughts raised high, as long as a rare excitement stirs your spirit and your body. Lestragonians, Cyclops, wild Poseidons, you won't encounter them unless you bring them along inside your soul unless your soul sets them up in front of you. Hope your road is a long one. May there be many summer mornings when with what pleasure, what joy, you enter harbors you're seeing for the first time. That you visit many Egyptian cities to learn and go on learning from their scholars. Keep Ithaca always on your mind. Arriving there is what you're destined for. But don't hurry the journey at all. Better it lasts for years. So if you're old by the time you reach the island, wealthy with all you've gained along the way, not expecting Ithaca to make you rich, Ithaca gave you the marvelous journey. Without her, you wouldn't have set out. Wise as you will have become, so full of experience, you'll understand then what these Ithaca means, what these Ithacas mean. Ithacas are your goals, are your targets. The journey is what you're going to commence on. Hopefully, at the end of the journey, you're going to be able to think the following thought that I noticed today on the marble memorial on Archbishop Yakovos' throne. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Bless you. Congratulations. Uh, and I now I would like to introduce Father John Magulius, Vice Chairman of the Board of Trustees. Christ is risen. It is indeed an honor and privilege to greet you on this glorious occasion of the graduation of 2022 for our beloved Scholli, Alene College and Holy Cross Greek Orthodox School of Theology. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, we give thanks for the opportunity we have, the blessing we have, to serve our Lord, His Church, His Skoli, and you, the people of God. Your Eminence, Archbishop Elpidophoros of America, respected hierarchs of the Holy Eparchial Synod, your graces, my brother priests, 
beautiful presbyteres, members of the Board of Trustees, faculty administrators, staff of our Scuoli, most importantly, our students and our graduates. When we enter the administration building, we see etched in marble the words of our Lord, Ostis Theli Opiso Muerthin. And it is with these words of our Lord that our journey begins here as students who hopefully will continue our studies, who hopefully will inspire other young people to take this path, to serve our church as the priest of tomorrow, as the faithful lay leaders of tomorrow. These words of our Lord were chosen as if the Lord would speak to us every day. Whosoever wishes to follow me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow. It is in the Holy Cross that we are all members of Christ's family. And it is in the Holy Cross that we become victorious in his glorious resurrection. In extending to you the greetings of the Board of Trustees, we commit to you that we will continue to support the efforts of our president, deans, faculty, and staff, that all of us on the day as today may be witnesses to what you accomplish in our church. You have our prayers. You have our love. Congratulations to the graduates. Congratulations to the parents of the graduates, their families, their friends, and all those who supported the graduates in this pilgrimage of faith that will take them from glory to glory. God bless you all. Uh, can you all hear me? Do we have this thing working? No, we don't. Okay. It works? Ah. This is my first graduation. Uh, it's now my pleasure to introduce the Honorable Steratos Eftimiu, the Council General of the Hellenic Republic of Boston, and a gentleman who has been a very loyal and supportive uh, uh, member of the Hellenic American community. Steratos, we thank you very much for all the things that you've done for us. Thank you, Mr. President. Σεβασμιότατη Αρχιεπίσκοπη Αμερική, κύριε Ελπιδοφόρε, Σεβασμιότατη Αρχιερή, Άγιοι Αρχιερεί, Αξιότιμε κύριε Πρόεδρε τη Σχολή, Αξιότιμοι κύριοι Έφοροι, Αγαπητοί Μαθητέ, Γονεί, Καθηγητέ, Καλημέρα και συγχαρητήρια. Σήμερα οι προσπάθειε όλων σα αποδίδουν καρπού. Είναι η τελευταία φορά που σα απευθύνομαι ω Γενικό Πρόξενο Ελλάδα στην Βοστόνη την επωνομαζόμενη και ως Αθήνα της Αμερικής. Η Βοστόνη είναι ένα μοναδικό κέντρο ακαδημαϊκού διαλόγου, έρευνας, θρησκευτικού πλουραλισμού, ανοχής και ελευθερίας. Είναι η πόλη που ξεκίνησε ο Αμερικανικός Αγώνας για την Ανεξαρτησία, εμπνευσμένο και αυτός από τα αρχαιοελληνικά ιδεώδη της δημοκρατίας και της ελευθερίας. Είναι η πόλη που σοφά επιλέχτηκε να είναι η καρδιά της θεολογικής εκπαίδευσης των κληρικών της Αρχιεπισκοπής Αμερικής για την προετοιμασία για το ποιμαντικό και θεολογικό του έργο. Η Ελλάδα, όπως τόνισε ο κύριος Πρωθυπουργό στην βαρισήμαντη και ιστορική του ομιλία στο Κογκρέσο, την Τρίτη, έχει ιστορικούς δεσμούς φιλίας 
και άριστα σχέσεις με τη σύμμαχο χώρα των Ηνωμένων Πολιτειών και είναι ευλογία ότι έχει εδώ στην Αμερική μια εξαιρετικά σημαντική ομογένεια που διακρίνεται σε όλους τους τομείς του επιστητού. Ομογενείς που είστε Αμερικανοί πολίτες, χριστιανοί ορθόδοξοι, με συνείδηση της ελληνικής εθνικής σας καταγωγής και της ιδιαίτερης πολιτιστικής σας ταυτότητας. Μιας ε, ταυτότητας και μιας γλώσσας που σφυριλατήθηκε στο πέρασμα των αιώνων από την αρχαία Ελλάδα ως το Βυζάντιο. Και θέλω να ευχαριστήσω όλους, αρχιερείς, ιερείς, καθηγητές, υποστηριχτές της σχολής, γονείς και μαθητές, γιατί αγωνίζεστε για τη διατήρηση των αξιών, των παραδόσεων και της ελληνικής γλώσσας. Αναφέρθηκε ο κύριος Πρόεδρος στην Ιθάκη το, το πείμα του μεγάλου μας ποιητή του ε, Κωνσταντίνου Καβάφη. Έχουμε περάσει μέσα από πολλούς, ε, ε, πολλές συμπληγάδες και λεστριγόνες και κύκλοπες. Είναι μακρύ το ταξίδι μας και της Ομογένειας και της Ελλάδας, αλλά θα φτάσουμε στον προορισμό μας και ο προορισμός μας είναι και μέρος και αυτού του ταξίδιου, να διατηρήσουμε την ταυτότητά μας, τη γλώσσα μας και την ελληνικότητά μας. Χάρη στην πίστη σα, μείνατε κοντά στι ελληνορθόδοξε παραδόσει. Και ο ρόλο, αγαπητοί φίλοι τη Θεολογική Σχολή και τη Αρχιεπισκοπής Αμερική, ήταν ανέκαθεν αυτό τη γέφυρα μεταξύ Αμερική και Ελλάδο, γέφυρα μεταξύ Ορθοδοξία και Ελληνισμού στην Αμερική. Και γι' αυτό χρήζουν στήριξη από όλου οι προσπάθειε του Σεβασμιότατου Αρχιεπισκόπου, του Προέδρου και των Εφόρων τη Σχολή για την αναδιοργάνωση τη Σχολή και την προσέλκυση χορηγιών. Όπω επίση είναι σημαντικέ οι προσπάθειε των ιερέων και του διοικητικού και διδακτικού προσωπικού τη σχολή. Και α είναι αιωνία η μνήμη του αίμνη του πατέρα Αντωνίου Παπαθανασίου, ενό ιερέα που υπηρέτησε επιστά τη σχολή για του φοιτητέ τη και ο οποίο μα άφησε δυστυχώ πρόωρα πριν από μερικού μήνε. Κλείνοντα, θα ήθελα να σα ευχαριστήσω όλου για την αγαστή συνεργασία όλα αυτά τα χρόνια και για τι προσπάθειέ σα για την προώθηση τη θεολογική παιδεία. Your eminence. Uh, your Eminences, Mr. President, Trustees, it has been an enormous privilege serving Greece in America, and I would like to thank you all for your cooperation, efforts, and love. Warm congratulations to all graduates. This is well deserved. This is a very important day for parents, professors, and students. And uh, I want to thank especially the trustees, the sponsors, and the generous supporters for their tireless commitment to the Greek Orthodox theological education and to the school's mission to forge values, principles, and the future leaders of our church. Congratulations. Thermasi kariteria se olus. Bravo! It's... Uh, uh, we congratulate Stratos uh, on his new position. We are sorry to lose him. He's going to be transferring uh, to Brussels, representing the Greek government at the EU. Saratos, best wishes. <laughs> it's now my pleasure to introduce Jeannie Ranglis, Vice President of the National Philoptikos Society and Metropolis of San Francisco President. Your Eminence, Metropolitan, excuse me. Your Eminence, Archbishop Elpidophotos of America. Your Eminences, Your Graces, Reverend Clergy, Presbyteras, Distinguished President George Cantonis, Esteemed Board of Trustees, the Honorable Stratos, our honorees today, respected faculty, graduates of the class of 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, Christos Anesti. Christos Anesti. As the National Philoptos First Vice President, it is my honor and privilege to deliver this heartfelt message of congratulations from the National Philoptos President, Arlene Sibelis Kiel, who represents the 25,000 Philoptos stewards, 437 chapters, and nine metropolises across our beloved Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America. Throughout your years at Hellenic College, Holy Cross, School of Theology, 
your Orthodox Christian faith helped you guide through your studies and gave you strength to achieve your objectives and goals. You were taught many lessons, but most importantly, it taught you to see the light and has given you hope. As I look up many times since my childhood at the Panokraton, at my home parish of St. Andrew Greek Orthodox Church in Chicago, I reflect on the following biblical passage inscribed there. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Whether you become a priest, a presbyteria, a pastoral assistant, a youth director, or ministry leader, always take the time to see the path that is lit before you. Make the most of your education to have the greatest impact on the lives of those around you. Be a careful listener, practice what you preach, partner with Philoptos to answer the call and make a significant difference in the lives of others. The National Philoptos has provided scholarships to students based on financial need and merit, but also supported the school with funding for cap the campus technology upgrades and to enable the Holy Cross Press to develop. Review and publish academic and scholarly texts and critical component of the upcoming 10-year accreditation review. Yet, Philoptos does more. As a philanthropic arm of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America and one of the largest faith-based women's philanthropic organizations in the United States, we have much to offer our parishes and the community at large. Upon graduation and entering the next phase of your life, and your career, I encourage you to use your time, your talents, and your treasures and walk side by side with your philoptos, your co-workers in Christ, to fulfill your philanthropic ministries of our church. In closing, as a proud undergraduate and graduate of alumni of the Northwestern University in Evanston, Illinois, I have been inspired by the university's motto which is based on Philippians 4.3. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, class 2022 and to See, all those celebrating today the feast day of saints constantine and helen equal to the apostles honia pola may our risen christ and lord bless you always thank you uh, uh ms ranglis just gave you a short list of the um uh wonderful things that Philoptikos has helped us with. Uh, they've been one of the pivotal national organizations that has assisted the school in so many ways, uh, and particularly recently the technological upgrades that they uh, facilitated us being able to put into place have not only helped us in terms of accreditation issues, but significantly enhanced the quality of the education we have. So Jeannie, please pass on our sincere thanks to the organization for what you do. It's now my pleasure to introduce Dimitris Logothetis, Chairman, Leadership 100. Would you please go down there and tell them that they shorted out the panel? They can't turn that fan on again. Your Eminence, Archbishop Elpido Foros, Metropolitan Methodios of Boston, respected hierarchs, 
esteemed President George Cantones, the Honorable Stratis Eftimiu, Stratos Eftimiu, distinguished faculty, graduates, families, and friends. Christos Anesti. I am honored to be part of the baccalaureate and graduate school commencement ceremonies honoring the class of 2022. I am privileged to greet you for the first time as chairman of Leadership 100, the culmination of, in many ways, of my lifetime devotion to my beloved Greek Orthodox Church and the, my Hellenic heritage. We feel blessed to be part of this auspicious commencement, which honors our beloved and esteemed executive director, Paulette Poulos, for her lifetime of service to our archdiocese and the church at large, together with a dedicated executive director and CEO of International Orthodox Christian Charities, Constantin Triadafilou. Leadership 100 helped initiate IOCC and continues to support its extraordinary organization. Primarily, this commencement is a testimony to the resilience of our beloved school, which has met the challenges of maintaining safety while preserving enrollment and accreditation as it moves boldly in the future. Leadership 100 has always been a major and loyal supporter of Hellenic College Holy Cross. To date, we have contributed $25 million to the scholarship program for seminarians with our ongoing commitment. I have followed as a top priority the tradition of every past chairman to secure financial support for our only Greek Orthodox theological school here in America. The school is a beacon for our faith and exemplary of our unity as a church, drawing students from parishes throughout the vast country, our vast country, bringing academics and pastors together for mutual enlightenment, providing the scholarship that has always been the hallmark of our Hellenic and Orthodox tradition, promoting and preserving our Greek heritage and language, and most of all, providing the training, spiritual formation, and preparation for its young graduates who will be the future leaders of our parishes and spiritual guides for our families. We take pride in all those we have walked through these doors over the generations, clergy and hierarchy, who alike prayed the same, at the same chapel and went to service to serve Christ and his church. To you, our beloved graduates of Hellenic College and Holy Cross, I extend the heartfelt congratulations of our board and all the members of Leadership 100. We pray that our risen Lord will guide you as you begin your worthy ministry in the life of the church in our great nation. Thank you. Uh, I think that it's safe to say that without Leadership 100's support, which has been in addition to the scholarships, that there have been additional grants, significant additional grants, that Leadership 100 has given to the school. That without this tradition of support, and I look forward to working with Jim closely during his term, uh, we wouldn't be here. Uh, the, with the, between the funding of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese and uh, the funding of Leadership 100 in terms of scholarships, uh, that allows us to not only survive but thrive. So please pass on to your Board of Trustees and members our very, very severe thanks. A sincere thanks. Uh, it is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Diana Dimitrulius, Vice President for Academic Affairs. Christos Anesti. Your Eminence, Archbishop Bill Peter Forus of America, Reverend High Arcs, President Cantonis, and distinguished guests, and of course, the stars of today are graduates of the class of 2022. I give praise to God for the priceless gift of my personal life's journey that brought me here to Hellenic College and Holy Cross. 
Dear graduates, today we celebrate you in this commencement. I know you join me in extending appreciation to the family and friends who joined in this celebration today, recognizing the sacrifices and love that they have provided to you throughout your studies. I think it would be suitable to have those family and friends stand and the graduates applaud them. Please. Please. Thank you. Graduates, you have studied very hard. I wish to extend greatest appreciation to the excellent faculty who have challenged you intellectually to succeed beyond endurance, and you have done so. Appreciation is also extended to the staff and offices throughout the campus and who organize the commencement activity today so that you, our wonderful students, could be served in your daily interactions. You have made new friends, you have deepened your faith, and you've matured intellectually and spiritually. And you have made a difference in the lives of those of us who are in the parishes and the surrounding communities. You have not only survived the rigors of the academy, you have flourished, and I'm proud of you. Just to uh, be on guard, I'm going to be giving you a pop quiz in just a moment, so pay attention. You thought testing was over. There's a famous poem by Robert Frost entitled The Road Not Taken that you likely read in high school or in your collegiate study. Here's an excerpt, quote, <laughs> I shall be telling you this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in the wood and I, I took the one less traveled by and that has made all the difference. The poem is a metaphor in which two roads diverge, symbolizing life's very difficult choices and made even more challenging in that humans are not able to see what the future holds while we are here on this earth. Several biblical passages, verses, address the road less traveled by. For example, Matthew 7, verses 13 to 14, we are presented with two gates, the wide gate and the narrow gate. Here is the uh, verse. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and there are many who go by it. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. By coming to HCHC, graduates, you have chosen the road less traveled by, a unique college with its academic mission deeply infused with the Orthodox Christian faith. I have confidence that each of you have and will continue to make all the difference in our society, and most importantly, the church. I pray that you seek the narrow gate and the road less traveled by. I pray also that you know that HCHC is here to support you as alumni and welcome you back home throughout your entire life. All right, here's the pop question. You can just say it in your head if you want. What is God's wish for us? The phrase in the book of Matthew and reflected also in the poem by Robert Frost. If you answered, take the road less traveled by and seek the narrow gate leading to eternal life, then you've answered correctly and you get an A+. Plus. I send my best wishes to you, graduates, as you begin your next steps on your journey to fulfill God's plans for you. Congratulations. Um, we need to check our speeches beforehand because Robert Frost was what I was going to do, and I'm glad I went to Gavafi. Otherwise, well, otherwise, one of us would have been out of luck. Um, I want to make a comment about Dr. Diana. She came to us a little bit over a year ago with vast experience in terms of uh, being a vice president of academic affairs, provost, etc. She has been probably the singular most important person on campus to work us through the accreditation issues that we have. So on behalf of everyone. It is literally true that we could not have done this without her. 
It is now my pleasure to introduce Father George Parsenios, Dean of the Holy Cross School of Theology. Your Eminence Archbishop Elpidophoros, Assembled Hierarchs, Honorable Consul General of Greece in Boston, President Cantonis, members of the Board of Trustees, honored guests, faculty, staff, and students, graduates, and their family and friends, Christos Anesti. We are so grateful to welcome you all to a graduation ceremony after not holding this ceremony for many years and we would like to welcome you all. But I would like to address my comments now especially to the graduates of the School of Theology. Because whether you leave here today to become priests, lay ministers, or to serve the church in some other capacity, you go forth today to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. And there is no greater model to follow in doing so than the Holy Apostle Paul, who tells us repeatedly, be imitators of me. I would like to reflect on Paul as a pastoral model then for the next few moments. But first we have to deal with this phrase, be imitators of me. There are some problems. The first one is, some people think St. Paul is arrogant when he says this. How can a Christian, let alone an apostle, think he's worthy of imitation? It doesn't sound humble. St. John Chrysostom recognizes the problem. He sees it in his own community, and he, he very deftly deals with it because he says, when St. Paul tells us to imitate him, he is not saying, I am above you. He knows that his communities are saying, well, Paul, of course you can do all these magnificent things. You've seen the risen Lord. You're an apostle. We can't do what you can do. In response, he tells them, be imitators of me. If I have done it, you can do it. He's not elevating himself. He's lowering and condescending in order that they recognize that what he has done, they can do. But there's a, there are other problems with this phrase when we think of how to live it. The first one is, which Paul do we imitate? He himself says in 1 Corinthians 9, I have become all things to all people. All things to all people. Again, an unsympathetic reader might think that Paul is here saying, I am a chameleon. I change my spots depending on the context in order to please this group now and that group later. Once again, St. John Chrysostom is helpful because he tells us, does Paul seem to be pleasing the Galatians when he says to them, you foolish Galatians? He goes on to say that the Apostle Paul varies his discourse according to the need of his disciples. Chrysostom evaluates Paul's impassioned and disapproving tone in Galatians by saying, always to speak to one's disciples with mildness, even when they need severity, is not the work of a teacher, but of a corrupter and an enemy. Like a careful physician, Chrysostom says, Paul knows when to prescribe to his patients soothing balms and medicines, and when to apply the knife in painful but necessary surgery. Through bold and frank speech, the parisia of a teacher who wants the improvement of his students. Paul is an adaptable good shepherd. But for us, no less than for the ancients, such adaptability is hard to achieve because our responses are often habitual and instinctive. We might, all, we might react aggressively to every crisis, even when something milder is required. Or we might always meet problems with a passive response, even when awful behavior needs to be curbed sharply. Beyond our particular personalities, political or social calculations can also impede our use of frank and bold parisia. 
stern severity is easy with people we do not like, just as kind compassion comes effortlessly with those we do. But in such cases, adaptability and bold speech have become something less noble and less transformative. I would like to hold up two ways in which to ensure that our adaptability is not that of a corrupter and an enemy, but of a friend. The ancient monastic communities of the Egyptian desert provide helpful models for the proper use of adaptability in, our, in a pastoral setting. The first thing to learn from them is silence. Knowing how to talk, knowing how to guide, begins with knowing when not to talk or when not to guide. The school of silence instructs us in the art of speaking. But silence does not mean simply the absence of, of, of conversation, which produces just a superficial quiet. What is needed as silence as a preparation for speech. Abba Piman says, a person may seem to be silent, but if his heart is condemning others, he is babbling ceaselessly. There may be another who talks from morning till night, and yet he is truly silent. That is, he others nothing unprofitable. Those of you who are students here will find yourselves quite rightly talking from morning till night in your pastoral work. You are required to speak and are learning how to speak, perhaps for the first time in your lives. This is not the time to tell you not to speak, but you can temper your words with a view to how they come across and how they make you appear. Be careful when you feel compelled to correct someone by saying whatever the topic. No, it isn't so-and-so, but so-and-so. In even such small matters, if you pause to reflect on the motives behind your speaking, you will have begun to cultivate the spirit of silence. When you no longer speak in order to assert yourself upon others, but have begun to discern when it will hurt to speak and when it will help. To do this requires freedom from fear. Fear that you will not look like the smartest person in the room. Fear that someone will get away with making you look foolish and that you won't be able to get them back. You will be insulted many times, wittingly or unwittingly, in your pastoral work. Be careful how you respond. You will do more good in the long run for knowing how to hold your anger than you will for firing back quickly. And you will be better equipped to see clearly in a murky situation how best to respond if your passions are in check before you speak. The spirit of silence does not imply never speaking. Total silence, too, hinders the work of the shepherd. The spirit of, the si the spirit of silence means judging when and how best to speak. Paradoxically, then, silence breathes frank and bold speech. The second source of frankness is simplerly a paradox, and I'll deal with it more quickly. Being able to speak boldly into a pastoral situation does not come from a prophet's righteous indignation. It comes from the merciful uh, compassion of the person who's giving alms to the poor. Three young brothers went to Abba Achilles and asked him to help them make fishing nets. He refers, refused the first two because he was busy, but the third had a very bad reputation among the monks. With him, Achilles agreed to work. When the others, whom he had refused, asked for an explanation, Achilles responded, If I had not made one for him, he would have said, The old man knows about my sin, and he doesn't want to work with me. This would have disheartened the brother and separated him from us. But now, Achilles says, I have aroused his soul. In the desert, fools are suffered gladly. Not only then does silence teach us how to speak, mercy teaches us how to correct. Finally, we return again to the Apostle Paul who tells us, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. To be able 
to allow Christ to move through you is a necessary precondition for pastoral adaptability. You are not responding to a situation based on what you want and what you wish, but because you know that your actions or your words will guide your community in front of you closer to Christ. You get yourself, we get ourselves out of the way. So we have to say before we say anything, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. If we work in this fashion, we will raise up future students in this school who will also be future pastors in this church. And we can honor them someday just as we are honoring you now and give glory to God for your very hard work. Thank you. I skip the order. I'll go back. I would now like to introduce Dr. Timothy Petitsis, Interim Dean of Helena College. Your Eminence, Archbishop Alpido Foros, Reverend Hierarchs, President Cantonis, respected faculty, all of our honored guests, beloved families, and most especially our graduates of the Hellenic College class of 2022. Christ is risen. Truly is risen. Hellenic College is a small and yet profoundly important institution of higher education. Hellenic College students represent an elite not based on the rejection of those who wanted to come here, but on the Holy Spirit moving in the hearts and bringing those who have been found worthy to study in these sacred precincts. Hellenic College graduates go on to make contributions to the church. They excel in the academy and in research. They labor in the healing professions. They guide nonprofit and for-profit organizations. They contribute to the arts and to literature. And they do all this on almost every continent while offering an irreplaceable quality of loving and firm leadership wherever they serve. While at Hellenic College, our young people study classical literature and <coughs> philology, theology, they study history, literature, philosophy, business management, psychology, and education. But they also come to know and to love their neighbor in this small and intimate community. In addition to their time in the classroom or studying in the dormitory, students spend hours in the library, hours in chapel, and hours organizing ways to serve others. And of course, many more hours talking. We love and honor all of our graduates for the dedication and sacrifice they have shown during their semesters and years here on campus. And we fully expect and believe that each of them will go on to do greater things than we have. This year's valedictorian, am I on the right? Uh, this year's valedictorian has particularly excelled in his studies of psychology. His academic advisor, Dr. Athena Aleni Mavrudi, believes that he will go on to contribute to his field, both as a practitioner and as an educator. Integrating faith practices and promoting compassionate behavior and beliefs among his own future students. And so with a full heart for all of our Hellenic College graduates and our Holy Cross graduates who, achieved, who have achieved so much here, I turn the floor over to our Hellenic College valedictorian of the class of 2022, Mr. George James O'Donnell.
testing. <laughs> Your Eminence, assembled hierarchs, President Cantonis, members of the Board of Trustees, honored guests, faculty, staff, and students of Hellenic College, family and friends. Christos Anesti. Christos Anesti. Christ is risen. Truly is risen. Christos vos Christ. <laughs> I don't speak Russian, I tried. <laughs> Congratulations, graduates. I am honored to be able to speak as the Hellenic College valedictorian, and I am just as surprised that we're already here. I joined the Hellenic family three years ago, but I've only been able to spend one full year on campus because of the pandemic. The time has flown by, and I'm honestly a bit sad to be leaving so soon. Instead of dwelling on those feelings, however, I've decided to share just some of what I have learned in the Psychology and Human Development program. In particular, I'd like to thank each and every one of my professors for their encouragement throughout my Hellenic College career. We all know that senioritis is a very serious disease that threatens the GPAs of millions of Americans every year, <laughs> though the cafeteria can help with that as well. Um, <laughs> I know that I certainly had my fair share of senioritis this year, especially after getting so used to online classes. Thankfully, all of my professors pushed me to always challenge myself and made it clear that their expectations for my work would reflect what they knew that I was capable of. I've been lucky enough to share a few classes with many of you in the college. I find especially that my fellow psychology and human development students have really bonded within the last year. Our classes on faith development, personality dynamics, and of course, cultural competency were truly a delight to spend with each of you. Everybody brought so much to each course, and I would love to share just some of the positivity that we had within our meetings, while respecting Dr. Priyatel's all-important confidentiality rule, of course. I will primarily focus on our cultural competency class, since, as my classmates know, it was probably my favorite course during my student career. Learning about different groups of people and the various issues that they face in their daily lives was truly eye-opening, I like to think that I'm pretty well versed uh, when it comes to different groups of people, but I learned that there is always room to grow. In fact, if there is one change that I could make to Hellenic College as a whole, I would only make one. It would be to require this class for each and every major. The chance to learn about groups that I had barely even heard about before is truly an invaluable experience. We all know that our Holy Hill is not as perfect as we would like it to be. None of us are perfect but that is certainly not expected of us. We are all familiar with Christ's command to love our neighbors, and cultural competency really drove that point home. I learned that, despite my best efforts, I still held some beliefs that deserved to be challenged, and I feel that this course has been the most effective at commuting, communicating the Christian message, even more so than any of my religious studies electives. There is something about learning about someone else's experience and seeing it not as the experience of a black, white, LGBTQ+, old, young, disabled, able-bodied, religious, non-religious, American, or non-American person, but instead as the experience of a human person. I do not plan on getting preachy with you all today, especially since I would hate to steal my seminarian friend's thunder. Instead, <laughs> I would simply like to offer some advice to each of you who will be heading out into the world after turning your tassels. An abundance of love will never be to anybody's detriment. I've learned while at Hellenic College that sometimes we can get too caught up in our own worlds to pay attention to the worlds around us. Whether it's a professor taking too long to reply to your email or the cafeteria serving calamari and orzo for the third night in a row, it can be easy to get frustrated with others. But as we know, everyone in our lives deserves the same mercy that Christ gives to each of us. We Orthodox are, after all, a minority in the United States. In fact, we only make up around 1% of the population in each state. If we can see the inherent value within each other here at this minority-majority school, why shouldn't we also extend that same compassion to those minorities who are marginalized by our society? We read in the Gospel of John that God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. He did not love Christians so much that he gave his only son, nor did he love Orthodox so much that he gave his only son. Our Lord God loves the world. Let us descend this holy hill, following the example that he has set by loving the world as he loves it. Thank you.
Uh, George, that was inspiring to us. Thank you. That was very good. Uh, I'd now like to reintroduce uh, Father George Parsenios. I am very happy to introduce the valedictorian of the MDiv class of 2022 of Holy Cross, Mr. Nico Seliadis. He is no stranger to the church community in Boston. He is a native of Somerville, grew up in the wonderful Boston youth ministry programs, and after graduating, he will continue working as a youth uh, assistant in the Roslindale Church. He is also no stranger to this podium and valedictory speeches. He is now the valedictorian of Holy Cross, but as a Hellenic College graduate, he was valedictorian then. Please join me in congratulating the 2022 valedictorian of the Holy Cross Greek Orthodox School of Theology, Nikos Eliadis. Σεβασμιότατε Αρχιεπίσκοπε Αμερική, κύριε Κύριε Επιδοφόρε, Σεβασμιότατε Μητροπολίτα Βοστόνη, κύριε Κύριε Μεθόδια, Σεβασμιότητη και Θεοφιλέστατη Αρχιερεί, Εξοχότατε Γενικέ Πρόξενε τη Ελλάδο, Εντιμότατε Σχολάρχα, κύριε Καντώνη, Εντιμότατη Ευεργέτε και Έφορη, Σεβαστή Πατέρε, Λογιώτη Κοσμήτορε και Καθηγητέ, Αγαπητοί φίλοι, Συγγενεί, Συμμαθητέ και Απόφοιτοι, Χριστό Ανέστη. Με τη βοήθεια του Θεού φτάσαμε όλοι σε αυτή την υπέροχη στιγμή της αποφυτήσεώς μας. Περάσαμε πολλά. Τα χρόνια που περάσαμε εδώ όμως θα είναι αλυσμόνητα. Εδώ γνωρίσαμε πολλά πρόσωπα τα οποία μας βοήθησαν να προοδεύσουμε ακαδημαϊκός και πνευματικός. Στο μέλλον όπου και να βρισκόμαστε θα πρέπει να σκεπτόμαστε και να προσευχόμαστε και να υποστηρίζουμε τη σχολή μας. Αυτή η σχολή έχει ιδιαίτερα σημασία για το μέλλον της Εκκλησίας μας στην Αμερική. Θα μας υπενθυμίζει πάντοτε την ιδιαιτερότητά μας ότι, δεν είμαστε, ότι είμαστε όχι μόνο Αμερικανοί, αλλά είμαστε και Ελληνορθόδοξοι. Να μην ξεχάσουμε την αθάνετη ελληνική γλώσσα με την οποία επικρατήθησαν και εξυπλώθησαν επί 20 αιώνα οι λόγοι του Χριστού, τα δόγματα του χριστιανισμού, η διδασκαλία των Πατέρων και οι παραδόσεις της Εκκλησίας μας. Εμείς ως Χριστιανοί Ορθόδοξοι και ιδιαίτερος ως απόφοιτοι της Θεολογικής Σχολής έχουμε την ευθύνη να διατηρήσουμε και να διαδώσουμε αυτή την κληρονομία όχι μόνο στους απογόνους μας, αλλά και σε όλον τον κόσμο. Τούτο μας υπενθυμίζει και ο Απόστολος Παύλος στην προς Θεσσαλονική Δευτέρα Επιστολή «Άρα ουν αδελφοί, στήκετε και κρατείτε τας παραδόσεις, άσε διδάχθητε». Αγαπητοί μου συμμαθητέ, εύχομαι από τα βάθη της ψυχής μου να μας συνοδεύει και να μας σκέπει πάντοτε η δύναμη του Τιμίου Σταυρού και εις ανώτερα. Your Eminence, Assembled Hierarchs, Honorable Consul General of Greece and Boston, President Cantonis and Members of the Board of Trustees, Honored Faculty, Guests, Staff, Students and Graduates of Holy Cross, Family and Friends, Christos Anesti. Christ is risen. By the grace of God, we have reached this amazing moment of our graduation. We have been through a lot, but we will never forget our time here. We came to know many people, some of which, many of which, helped us to progress both academically and spiritually. We have grown together, we have excelled together, we have grieved together, we have laughed together, we have rejoiced together. We will always remember each other in our prayers and we will always remember the memories which we created here. A few days ago, I ascended a meet and greet event with the Alumni Executive Board at our beloved Maliotis uh, Cultural Center. There I was able to see many alumni reminisce about their time here at Helena College Holy Cross, recalling stories which took place years ago. After all these years, it seems that these friends picked up right where they left off, as if no time at all had passed. I pray that one day we may find ourselves again on this campus so that we may reminisce again about all the great things that went on while we were here. 
In the years to come, wherever we may find ourselves, we must pray for our school and we must support our school. This sacred school plays a vital role for the future of the Orthodox Church in America. It must always remind us of our uniqueness, that we are not only American, but we are also Greek Orthodox. It is important that we do not forget the immortal Greek language through which Christ's words, the dogmas of Christianity, the teachings of the fathers, and our ecclesiastical traditions were maintained and spread. As Orthodox Christians, but even more as graduates of this theological school, we have the responsibility to maintain and disseminate this inheritance, not only to the next generation, but to the whole world. St. Paul even reminds us of this in his second epistle to the Thessalonians, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught. Beloved classmates, may the power of the most precious cross always follow and protect us as we go on to do great things. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. The last two speakers, I hope, give you an idea of why we are so immensely proud of this institution. Um, Your Eminence, would you please come forward? Uh, Father Kourimetis, would you please escort Ms. Poulos? Dr. Tim, would you please read the citation? Since her appointment as Executive Director of the Archbishop Yakovos Leadership 100 Fund in 2011, Paulette Poulos, the first woman in that position, has worked tirelessly and with great success to advance the organization's philanthropic endeavors. Paulette's entire professional life has been devoted to serving the Church in a broad range of critically important roles since joining the staff of the Archdiocese in 1965. In 1984, she became the administrator to the office of His Eminence Archbishop Iakovos, working closely with him and traveling to parishes throughout the Archdiocese, becoming one of the most visible, respected, and admired Orthodox women in the country. After His Eminence's retirement in 1996, <coughs> Paulette established an office at his residence in Rye, New York, and she remained at his side until his passing in 2005. She then became development director for Leadership 100, a position she held until her appointment as executive director six years later. A constant throughout Paulette's long and varied career has been her unwavering support of Hellenic College, Holy Cross, and of its sacred mission to prepare men and women for vocations in the Church and in society. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Corporation and its Board of Trustees of Hellenic College Holy Cross, Greek Orthodox School of Theology, I do hereby confer upon Paulette Poulos the honorary degree Doctor of Humanities, and indeed, it is my sincere pleasure to do so. It's not embarrassing. You deserve it, my dear. You deserve it. No, don't you be embarrassed at all. Hey, here you go. <laughs> Let me just Let me get my Talk about embarrassment, Panayim. Your Eminence, Archbishop Elpido Foros. Metropolitan Methodius of Boston, respected hierarchs, esteemed President George Cantonis, the Honorable Stratos F. Dimio, distinguished faculty, graduates, families, and friends. Christos Anesti. This day belongs to you, the beloved graduates who have worked tirelessly 
toward receiving your degree and preparing for your graduation. We join together with your beloved parents and your families in congratulating you as you begin a new chapter in your lives. To those of you graduating from the theological school who have received the special calling to become priests of our archdiocese, we pray that your ministry will be a fruitful, meaningful one, offering your full self to the church and to the parishes that you serve. To those of you who have completed your courses here at the college, I want to assure you that there is a place for you to serve our archdiocese and to offer your talents toward paving the way for other young men and women to become a vital and active part of this church. The church belongs to all of us, men and women, and the archdiocese has a great need for your talent. So please think about serving the archdiocese. As students of Hellenic College, you had the unique opportunity to learn the Greek language and experience our Hellenic culture. We are truly blessed to have these gifts, and no matter what path you choose in your life, I urge you to cherish and preserve the language and heritage that has been given to you through your beloved parents and ancestors. On a personal note, I had the privilege of being blessed with two exceptional parents who raised us in the church and instilled in us the values of our Orthodox faith and Hellenism. I am truly overwhelmed by this great honor bestowed upon me today, and although I feel totally unworthy, I thank our beloved spiritual leader, Archbishop Elpidophoros, and our esteemed president, George Cantonis, for this tribute. I am not a scholar or a celebrity, but merely a worker in the vineyard who has been blessed to be mentored by a great leader, Archbishop Iakovos of blessed memory. He set the course for our church in the modern era. I have been doubly blessed to carry out his legacy as Executive Director of Leadership 100 and continue to enjoy the support of the exceptional men and women who have led us to this current day. It is for this reason that I accept this honor, for it honors the trust of my mentor and the legacy of Archbishop Iakovos, which he left behind. I thank our newly appointed Leadership 100 Chairman, Mr. Jim Logothetis, and our past chairman who have carried this legacy into the future. I congratulate my fellow honoree and dear friend, even though he's not with us today, Dean Triandafilu, who has offered his extraordinary service as Executive Director of IOCC. I would be remiss in not publicly acknowledging my long and dear friend, Father Nicholas Triandafilo, who not only served as former president of Hellenic College, but also as the executive director of Leadership 100. Please, no <laughs> Melanie, please send your dear dad our love together with Bezitera Diana. Please know that Hellenic College, Holy Cross, and its students are at the heart of Leadership 100's mission, and we will remain so for decades to come. In closing, I again convey to His Eminence, Archbishop Elpidophoros, my heartfelt gratitude for his paternal love, his trust and support in me personally, and for his new and visionary leadership for our church here in America. I express my heartfelt thanks to President George Cantonis for his effective and forward-looking administration, and I assure him of our continued support. May our risen Lord keep you all in the light of his presence. Efarista. I am so proud. Of <laughs> Thank you. This is long overdue. <laughs> so Thank you for accepting this. Thank hold on. Let's take Thank a you. shot. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Turn and smile. You want to get the archbishop? Thank you. Okay. Thank you, dear. Unfortunately, 
Uh, Dean Trian DeFilo called me the other night and regrettably informed me that he was trapped in a hotel room in Chicago because he had come down with COVID. So uh, on his behalf, uh, Father Gourmetis, if you would please escort Father Elias Villas, his brother-in-law, who will be accepting the um, honor on his behalf. Father Parsenios, would you please read the citation? As executive director and CEO of International Orthodox Christian Charities, an organization you joined almost 30 years ago, you have overseen the distribution of many millions of dollars in emergency assistance and development aid in more than 60 countries. The tangible and intangible global impact of your passionate altruism is immeasurable. You embody the highest virtues espoused equally by our faith, our Hellenic heritage, and the society in which we live. Thus, Constantine Triandafilu, we are most thankful to you for giving us the singular privilege and great joy of bestowing upon you our sacred institution's highest honor, the degree of Doctor of Humanities Timis Eniken. May your selfless love and dedication to Christ and his church serve as an example for all. Thank you. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Corporation and its Board of Trustees of Hellenic College Holy Cross, Greek Orthodox School of Theology, I do hereby confer upon Constantine Driandafilu the honorary degree of Doctor of Divinity. Thank you. Wow, that was pretty cool. And I know some of you are thinking, especially close friends, the same thing I'm thinking, that this is the closest I will ever get to receiving a doctorate degree. And my brother-in-law, I'm sure, is thinking the same thing. One thing I will add, Father George Presenios, to his biography, if I may, Dean Triandafilo is more than just uh, a CEO, more than just a man of the gospel. You need to know that if you have the pleasure or the grace and gift to meet someone like Dean Triandafilu, or if you have met Dean Triandafilu, you will meet someone or you have met someone who has put his own life in jeopardy. You will have met someone or you will meet someone who's had a gun held to his head multiple times. He is a man of the faith and a man of the gospel. When, his, art, when the, his eminence blessed me to read his speech, I called Dean, I said, do I have your permission? And like a big brother, he said, that's fine, but you have to read it with a Texas accent. <laughs> that's not happening, and he can do nothing about it. You'll know the Texas slang in his speech. Christ is risen. Truly is risen. Your Eminence, Archbishop Epidophoros, Your Eminence, Your Graces, Reverend Clergy, faithful leaders of Hellenic College, Holy Cross, Seminary, friends and graduates, Christos Anesti. Your Eminence and President Cantonis, thank you for including me on this beautiful day and this incredible honor. Thank you for your love, support, and confidence. Hellenic College Holy Cross Seminary is near and dear to our hearts as it has been an integral part of our family's lives for over 65 years through our parents' journey as student, priest, fundraiser, and leader. Thank you now to Dr. Paulette Poulos for your service to our world and faith. You are 
our inspiration, oxia. And he has in parentheses, Louis, I grew up Louis. If the response is not loud enough, say it again. Oxia. Oxia. I tell my kids and staff all the time when we are faced with a challenge or tough situation that the truth will set us free. Well, my friends, the truth is big guys from Texas do cry and can get COVID. I was crushed when I realized that I had COVID and I could not be with y'all today. Which leads me to the second truth. When His Eminence called me last month, I was totally not expecting the call. I immediately reached for a pen and paper and jotted few notes to brief him on Ukraine or Greece. I was speechless when he informed me about the honorary doctorate. It took me a few days to process the idea, and I w it was easier to accept when I realized it's not all about me. There are so many others that are part of my journey, particularly the board and staff of IOCC and my family. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for your encouragement to pursue my dreams no matter how far they took me. Thank you to my sisters and their families for your always being there for me, including standing in for me today. Thank you to my beautiful and selfless wife, Maya, my amazing children, Nick and Anna, for your courage and conditional love, no matter how many trips I took over the years. And now the third truth. While cutting the grass the other day, I decided to take the Hemingway Challenge and come up with a six-word memoir to share with y'all that captures my lessons learned over the past 35 years or so from my, all my failures and successes. I obviously failed. Actually, I could not stop thinking about the five words of my dear friend and brother, Patriarch Abuna Pavlos of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church of Blessed Memory. Loving people is loving God. We must love God. Loving God is more than just saying we love God. It is loving all human beings that God loves. He loves all human beings without discrimination, and that is why we came into this world. Loving people is loving God. Respecting and serving people is loving God. Graduates, I promise you that armed with love and the lessons learned on this most holy hill, under the watch of His Eminence Archbishop Yakovos of blessed memory, and all of the spiritual giants that walk and have walked these walls, you will succeed. The challenge is yours to put your faith in God, to listen to what He says, and to use the talents and resources He has given you to fight against hunger, despair, racism, and inequality in order to make a difference in people's lives. If you find yourselves in a war zone, which may happen if you come work for me, or just need to kick around a few ideas, give me a holler. I got your back. We are proud of you all and can't wait to witness your service to our world in faith. Loving people is loving God. Uh, before we go on, I, I want to just make the following comment. The Board of Trustees could not be any more proud of being, having the opportunity to honor Paulette and Dean. They are outstanding examples of uh, orthodox contribution, not only to the church, but to the greater community. And so please join me in another round of applause for both of them. Tim. <clears throat> Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts, please rise.
Reverend President, upon the recommendation of the faculty of the Undergraduate College and of the Board of Trustees, I am pleased to present the candidates who have fulfilled all requirements for the degree of Bachelor of Arts. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Hellenic College, Holy Cross, Greek Orthodox School of Theology, I do hereby confer upon you all the degree of Bachelor of Arts according to the requirements set forth by the college in which you have qualified with all honors, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto pertaining. Candidates, as your name is called, please proceed. Lydia Abraham, with high distinction. Why don't you stand on this side? Stand on this side. Yeah. Here. Yeah, turn, stand a minute. There you go. In absentia, Michael Barakat, with high distinction. Just put it there. No, just put it there. In absentia, oh, right. Moises Santiago Chavez Morales, with high distinction. <laughs> Sophia Curie, with highest distinction, in absentia. <laughs> Anastasia Lichardopoulos, honors program graduate, with highest distinction. Oops, I skipped a name. Congratulations. Nicholas John DeFoulis, with highest distinction. George J. O'Donnell, with highest distinction. Very nice job. Alexander Pavlovich, with distinction. Congratulations. Mary Catherine Elizabeth Randall. Argirios Stilianu Stakias. There you go. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Ivy Gabriela Tesfe with high distinction. Congratulations. Alejandro Zendejas Alvarez. Congratulations. Father George. Candidates for the advanced degree of Master of Theology, please rise.
Mr. President, upon the recommendation of the faculty of the Graduate School of Theology and the Board of Trustees, I am pleased to present the candidates who have fulfilled all the requirements for the degree of Master of Theology. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Hellenic College Holy Cross Greek Orthodox School of Theology, I do hereby confer upon you all the degree of Masters of Theology according to the requirements set forth by the Graduate School of Theology in which you have qualified with all honors, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto pertaining. Candidates, please proceed when your name is called. Melania Linderman. With highest distinction. Congratulations. The very Reverend Archimandrite Christophoros Economides with high distinction. Congratulations. Candidates for the advanced degree of Master of Theological Studies, please rise. Mr. President, upon the recommendation of the faculty of the Graduate School of Theology and the Board of Trustees, I am pleased to present the candidates who have fulfilled all requirements for the degree of Master of Theological Studies. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Hellenic College Holy Cross Greek Orthodox School of Theology, I do hereby confer upon you all the degree of Master of Theological Studies according to the requirements set forth by the Graduate School of Theology in which you have qualified, with all honors, privileges, responsibilities thereunto pertaining. Candidates, please proceed when your name is called. Andriana Stavrula Dalis with high distinction. Congratulations. Ioannis Flanders with high distinction. Melania Linderman with high distinction. Bravo, Melania. So proud of you. Congratulations. Eleni Maria Petitsis with distinction. Congratulations, congratulations. Annalise Palmer Four. There you go. Hey, now smile. <laughs> congratulations. Dr. Ioana Popa with highest distinction. Dr. Popa, congratulations, congratulations.
Candidates for the Certificate in Byzantine Music, please rise. <laughs> Mr. President, upon the recommendation of the faculty of the Graduate School of Theology and the Board of Trustees, I am pleased to present the candidates who have fulfilled all requirements for the Certificate in Byzantine Music. In absentia, Mindy C. Brand. In absentia, Christopher John Condros. In absentia, George Michael Rallis. In absentia, Michael George Rallis. In absentia, Aris Nicholas Spiritos. And in person, Filipos Georgios Gurguliatos. Congratulations. Congratulations. Best of luck. Why don't you step here? Will the candidates for the Certificate in Youth and Young Adult Leadership and Ministry please rise? <laughs> Mr. President, upon the recommendation of the faculty of the Graduate School of Theology and the Board of Trustees, I am pleased to present the candidates who have fulfilled all requirements for the Certificate in Youth and Young Adult Leadership and Ministry. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Hellenic College, Holy Cross, Greek Orthodox School of Theology, I do hereby confer upon the Certificate in Youth and Young Adult Ministry according to the requirements set forth by the Graduate School of Theology in which you have been qualified, with all honors, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto pertaining. Candidates, please proceed when your name is called. Christina D. Anastasiadis. Congratulations. Constantina Jordan Brown. Congratulations. Leila Mane. Nicole Kolovas Price. Congratulations. Sarah Emily Stewart. Congratulations. Ivy Gabriela Tesfe. Congratulations. Candidates for the, advan for the advanced degree Master of Divinity, please rise. Mr. President, upon the recommendation of the faculty of the Graduate School of Theology and the Board of Trustees, I am pleased to present the candidates who have fulfilled all the requirements for the degree of Master of Divinity. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Hellenic College, Holy Cross, Greek Orthodox School of Theology, I do hereby confer upon you the degree of Master of Divinity according to the requirements set forth by the Graduate School of Theology in which you have qualified with all honors, 
privileges and responsibilities thereunto pertaining. Candidates, please proceed when your name is called. Jack Andrew Bushel, with high distinction. Congratulations. Alexandros T. Dubris. Congratulations. Nicholas George Eliades with highest distinction. Congratulations. Harold John Jacobson. Great job. In Very proud of you. Alexander Stephen Karcher with high distinction. We're going to miss you. I'll be here. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> Mark Mandeville. Glad you're staying. Spiridon Morris with distinction. Congratulations. The Reverend Father Elias Pappas with distinction. <laughs> Sofia Petru. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Anastasis Spiros Virilas. Sophia, congratulations. In absentia. Michael Sellas, in absentia. Anthony Christopher Wilson, in absentia. Two honorary votes. We have two honorary votes. We also have the hooding of the two honorary degree recipients. So if they could please come forward. Paulette, you're just coming here? Yeah. No, that is eminence. No, that is eminence. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Father Villas, we will be giving you deans if you could please uh, give uh, the, uh, uh, the robing to him. Yes. Could we have it? Yes, we do. Yes. On his arm, right. Please.
Thank you, Despina. That was really quite beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it is now my distinct pleasure to invite uh, uh, His Eminence, Archbishop El Pilafodos, who is not only our Archbishop but also Chairman of the Board of Helena College Holy Cross, to the podium to give the Pater Exoratory and Benediction. Your Eminence. Please be seated. Paracalo Cathister. President Candonis, Your Eminence Metropolitan Methodius of Boston, Your Eminence Metropolitan Savas of Pittsburgh, Your Grace Bishop John of the Antiochian Church, Your Grace Bishop Ioachim of Amisos, Your Grace Bishop Athenagoras of Nazianzos, Honorable Consul General of Greece, Honorable President of the Leadership 100, dear members of the Board of Trustees, faculty and administration, clergy and laity, and most important of all, the graduates of 2022, Christos Anesti. <laughs> I am so happy to be here with you this week and this very special day. My second Hellenic College and Holy Cross graduation in person, but my first as Archbishop of America. It was the year 2004, and I was teaching here for a semester. Who, who, who could have predicted at that time the tremendous obstacles and difficulties that would lie in wait for us so many years later. But you have persevered. You have tri triumphed. You dug in your heels, and all of you, students, faculty, and administration, you were determined to complete your school year despite the pandemic. None of us should underestimate the accomplishment that this commencement ceremony represents. In the midst of the greatest and most widespread societal challenge in living memory, this campus soldiered on. And you, the graduates of 2022, you are the sign of our victory in Christ. My brief address today is traditionally called the affirming admonition of a father. But I have to tell you all that, seeing the accomplishments of our precious scholarly, how you have all pulled together to bring stability, steadfastness, and security to this vital institution of our national church, you fill me with encouragement. As your Archbishop, and as your father in Christ, I stand here for the 80th graduation of this school. In the centennial year of our sacred archdiocese, and I am filled with hope and excitement for the future of Orthodox Christianity here in the United States. This is not to say that we do not have daunting challenges even now or that the path ahead is smooth sailing. As St. Isaac the Syrian says, the path of God is a daily cross. No one has ascended into heaven by means of ease. But this place is dedicated to the Holy Cross. You have been enveloped by the teaching of the cross all your years on this hill. The cross is the key to unlock every impenetrable door. The cross is the ladder by which we can scale every unimaginable height. There is nothing that you cannot do when your purpose is aligned with its four sacred points. On the vertical axis, through the cross, you are united to God. 
God whose love is so great that he would die upon dead wood in order to make it blossom for eternity with spiritual fruit. On the horizontal axis, this same love transforms your relationship to every creature. The cross is our bridge to all of creation, spanning any difference to bring us into lives of others through sacrificial love. The path of the cross is an unending one. Like your studies here at the Hellenic College and Holy Cross, they are the beginning of your education, which is a lifelong vocation. Therefore, I exhort you to constantly aspire to a deeper and deeper understanding of your faith and of your place in this world. God's purposes are unchangeable, but can be revealed under any conditions. But it requires your vulnerability, your willingness for the God of revelation to reveal to you who you really are. Your readiness to be face to face with God, exposed to his brilliance and power, so that, as St. Paul says, with unveiled countenance, beholding as in mirror the glory of the Lord, we are transformed, transformed into the same image from glory to glory. My beloved graduates, your families and the community of Hellenic College and Holy Cross, today is your day of commencement, and this campus is your point of embarkation. Your journey of faith continues as your journey in life departs these shores. Like the disciples in the boat crossing the Sea of Galilee, a storm will arise from time to time. But the Lord, he is always near, walking with us, walking with you, even over the waves of the water, so that we might always arrive at our safe haven on the other shore. As you go forward, make sure that your ship is always the Church of Christ. Your sail is the Holy Scripture, and your mast is the Holy Cross. Thus, you will navigate the great ocean of this life with confidence, knowing that your conveyance is unsinkable, establishing all of you in faith unshakable. Σεβασμιότατοι Άγιοι Αδελφοί, Θεοφιλέστατοι Άγιοι Αδελφοί, Εξοχότατε Κύριε Γενικέ Πρόξενε της Ελλάδος, Αγαπητέ Κύριε Καντώνη, Αγαπητέ Κύριε Πρόεδρε του, της ηγεσία των Εκατό, Αγαπητοί Κύριοι Καθηγητές και Κυρίες Καθηγήτριες, Αγαπητά μου παιδιά, Σήμερα η σχολή σας ξεπροβοδίζει. Σας αποχαιρετά. Όλα αυτά τα χρόνια που περάσατε εδώ προσπάθησαν οι δάσκαλοι σας, ο πρόεδρος, οι αθηγητές και οι καθηγήτριες να σας δώσουν ό,τι καλύτερο είχαν. Αλλά, όπως ξέρουμε πολύ καλά, η θεολογία δεν είναι γνώση, δεν είναι κάτι που μαθαίνει κανείς από τα βιβλία μόνο. Ειδικά η Ορθόδοξη Θεολογία είναι λειτουργική ζωή. Είναι προσευχή στο παρεκκλήσι, στο ναό του Τμίου Σταυρού. Είναι βίωμα, είναι ζωή η θεολογία μας. Είναι ζωή η πίστη μας. Δεν είναι γνώση. Και αυτήν την γνώση, αυτήν την εμπειρία, σας παρακαλώ να την καλλιεργήσετε καθώς θα φύγετε από εδώ με βάση τις γνώσεις που πήρατε και με βάση τα παραδείγματα που είχατε από τη σχολή, παραδείγματα από τους ευσεβείς δασκάλους σας, από τους αρχιερείς, από τους κληρικούς που βλέπατε να λειτουργούν στο παρεκκλήσι, από τους πνευματικούς σας πατέρες. Αυτά τα παραδείγματα θα λειτουργήσουν στην ψυχή σας πιο δυνατά από τα βιβλία που διαβάσατε. 
και με βάση αυτές τις εμπειρίες της Ορθοδόξου Θεολογίας και της πνευματικότητας και μέσα ακόμα από τις ακολουθίες που τελέσατε, θα αντλείτε δύναμη στην αυριανή υπηρεσία και διακονία σας στην Εκκλησία. Έχετε την μεγάλη τιμή και το μεγάλο προνόμιο να είστε απόφοιτοι της ελληνικής Ορθόδοξης Θεολογικής Σχολής του Τιμίου Σταυρού. Και δεν το λέω από εθνικιστική διάθεση. Το λέω με το ίδιο πνεύμα που το ανέφερε και ο κύριος Ηλιάδης, ο Βαλεντικτόριαν που μίλησε τόσο θαυμάσια ελληνικά, ότι δηλαδή το ελληνικό πνεύμα, η ελληνική γλώσσα και ο ελληνικός πολιτισμός είναι αυτός ο πολιτισμός και αυτή η κουλτούρα και η γλώσσα που παρέδωσαν σε μας δύο χιλιάδες χρόνια μετά το Ευαγγέλιο καταρχήν, την πίστη του Χριστού, τις αποφάσεις των Οικουμενικών Συνόδων, τα λειτουργικά μας κείμενα, την θεολογία της Εκκλησίας όπως την διατύπωσαν οι πατέρες της Εκκλησίας, οι μεγάλοι πατέρες της Εκκλησίας, οι μεγαλύτεροι πατέρες της Εκκλησίας διατύπωσαν τα δόγματα τα Ορθόδοξα στην ελληνική γλώσσα, όχι διότι ήταν εθνικιστές και διότι μειονεκτούσαν οι άλλες γλώσσες, αλλά διότι αυτή η γλώσσα ήταν η γλώσσα του Ευαγγελίου και διότι είχε τα χαρακτηριστικά εκείνα που μπορούσε να εκφράσει τις ιδιαίτερες εκείνες λεπτές γραμμές που ξεχωρίζουν την Ορθοδοξία από τα άλλα δόγματα που δεν είναι Ορθόδοξα. Λοιπόν, είναι ένα μεγάλο προνόμιο και ιδιαίτερα εδώ στην Αμερική που η Ορθόδοξη, Ελληνική Ορθόδοξη Εκκλησία είναι ίσως, χωρίς να υποτιμήσω τις άλλες αδελφές εκκλησίες, είναι ίσως η μεγαλύτερη, η καλύτερα οργανωμένη, η πιο πολύ ευημερούσα και πραγματικά μπορούμε να είμαθα υπερήφανοι όλοι μας που είμαστε μέλη αυτής της Εκκλησίας. Λοιπόν, έχετε αυτό το προνόμιο, έχετε τα εφόδια που σας χρειάζονται για να συνεχίσετε στην διακονία σας στην Εκκλησία, να ξέρετε ότι οι Αρχιεπισκοποί, ο Αρχιεπίσκοπος, οι Μητροπολίτες, οι Επίσκοποι, οι δάσκαλοί σας, ο Πρόεδρος, όλα τα μέλη της εφορίας της Θεολογικής Σχολής, είμαστε δίπλα σας. Η ηγεσία των 100, κλήρος και λαός, όλοι δίνουμε ό,τι καλύτερο έχουμε στην θεολογική μας σχολή. Και φιλοδοξία μας είναι η μελλοντική κληρική, από εδώ και στο εξής, να είναι στον τύπο του Βαλεντικτόριαν της σημερινής ημέρας. Να είναι δηλαδή κληρικοί οι οποίοι θα μπορούν και στις δύο γλώσσες να κηρύξουν το Ευαγγέλιο, θα μπορούν να λειτουργήσουν και στις δύο γλώσσες, όχι διότι θέλουμε να κάνουμε την ζωή των ιερέων μας πιο δύσκολη ή να τους βασανίσουμε, αλλά διότι ο λαός εκεί έξω θέλει και ελληνικά και αγγλικά. Λοιπόν, είστε άξιοι, είσαστε στις προσευχές μας, καλό κατεβόδιο ο Κύριος μαζί σας. Χριστός Ανέστη. Let us pray to the Lord. Bless, O Lord, our precious Holy, and illumine the hearts and minds of the students, faculty, administration, and most especially today's graduates with the light of the resurrection. As these new alumni of Hellenic College and Holy Cross set out from the safe harbor of this school, across the ocean of their lives. May the Holy Cross be their shining, guiding star, as it was for St. Constantine. Bless their coming in and their going forth, that may always fulfill your will and offer praise, glory, and adoration to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Και τώρα να ψάλουμε όλοι μαζί. Χριστός Ανέστη εκ νεκρών θανάτων θανάτων θα κύριε.
Congratulations to the graduates. Thanks to their family and friends. Always thanks to His Eminence, the Archbishop, to, the, to our Board of Trustees, to our distinguished guests, and congratulations to our honorees. Pali Christos Anesti. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you all for coming.
Thank you. Mr. Cron.